What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another Vintage Cube Draft. I got a little Cars Trail Mix, so I'll be snacking on that until it's gone. I like an Academy. Absolutely love a channel. You know you know me. It's your boy. It's your channel -y boy. But then there's this Mox Jet, and, you know, <clears throat> we're not idiots. So we're taking Mox Jet. There's a part of me that wanted channel. A real strong part of me that wanted channel. But. It's a mock strip. He's fixated on that channel like the soldiers at Dunkirk. <laughs> God damn, Lord Doyle himself coming out of the woodwork over <clears throat> A little peanut skin went down the wrong way there. What do we got? What do we got? Show it to me. I do love this card. I really want to cast it and attack with it. That's all I want to do. <clears throat> Also a candelabra, but we just passed Talarian Academy. I like Gix as well. Turn two Gix is pretty sweet. I don't really care about Monolith that much. I kind of want turn two Gix. <laughs> it keeps us in black. Like you don't have to use the color mocks you get, obviously, but I, I, I do like it when you are able to. I'm gonna take Gix here. It's I don't think that's a I think that's a fairly controversial pick. Not many would take it. That guy just has to attack and, and, and deal damage and you get the card. Mm. Goldspan, Bayou. You look like a Goldspan dragon. With a Gix out, you're drawing a card and making a treasure. What value? I like a duress. So for me, I think it's Goldspan or Bayou. Hmm. Boy. Boy, oh boy. All right, we'll go with Bayou. Give the people what they want, you know? Smit Growth Chamber. Oh, a Deep Cavern Bat? That's that's a good one. I am a fan of a of a DCB. Yeah, nothing else in here is, is even that good. Yeah, that guy's nice. Tarmogoyf was recently added to the cube. I don't think I agree with it. All he wants a peanut. You can't you can have a peanut. You know what? I'm going to reward you because you came down and your brother didn't. There you go. Right here. Hey. Right here. Oh, your brother is here. Shit, Watson's here too. Now I got to get two peanuts. Watson. There you go. Good boys. Hmm. This is interesting because the cards I want... Our Dak Faden and Thopter Foundry. Hmm. No, I'm not taking Trop. We're taking Thop. And then we're gonna cross our fingers for that sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet sword. Mm -hmm. Fatal push. I'll fatal push here. See, the thing is, here we can either go in blue or we can go in green. Or we can go in both. So we're taking a fatal push here. There's a palantir. My God, you guys, I, I love a palantir. You guys know that. You guys know that about me. I love a palantir. Hmm. Grist? Yeah, Grist is pretty good. 
It's, I think it's the only card we'd even consider here. Are you saying Verdict over Palantir? I don't think that's, that doesn't feel correct. Thran Dynamo, that's cute. It's probably just Karn here. None of these are very good. We do have several artifacts as well. Yeah, Karn seems decent. Yep, Basalt Monolith came back. Trinket Mage is Sword of the Meat cost one? If it does, I'm taking the Trinket Mage. I'm pretty sure it does. It costs two. I made that up. I just made that whole thing up. We have Grist and Karn. I wonder if Heart of Kieran is actually pretty decent. What if we just try to build a bunch of Planeswalkers? Also, Snuff Out. I want to take a Snuff Out. <laughs> snuff Out just seems better. Non-black. Yeah. Classic. Oh, Talisman of Talisman of Dominion came Dominance came back. That's really good. So did Goldspan Dragon. This is weird, man. I, I know my picks are fairly unconventional, but I feel like everything I've tried to pick or even discussed wanting just comes back. Tribe Elder. That's a late Arid Mesa. It's the exact two colors we're not even considering. I think we'll just take Sundering Titan. Who knows what's going to happen? I'll take Golgari Rot Farm. If we are green, that's, that's a thing. Seal of Rule? Also not terrible. Sword of the Meek. Give me that swordy. Emrakul? Does Emrakul do anything? Not in these colors. Zagoth Triome is actually pretty good. <clears throat> What's going on here on my telephone? The garage door just opened. Did Katie get... Did she get off work? She didn't even say it. She didn't even tell me she got off work. <coughs> Fascinating. Um, I don't think it's Psy. I hate Rankle. Uh, Garrick's fine, but I'm not taking a double green card here. I'd much rather have a fixing land that fixes all the colors we could potentially even consider. <laughs> Sleeper. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Um, yeah, I'm just taking Zagoth Trium here. Like, even if we're only two of these colors, it's it doesn't matter if we're black-blue or black-green. It's, it's good with both. I do like a Preordain. I also like a Mox Diamond, though. I think we're just taking Mox Diamond here. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now we have double moxes. Look at that. Look at us go. Sir, it's a fine card. I think it is a fine card, actually. I do like Sleeper. I just don't know if this is the deck for it. Does Watson? Hi, Watson. Watson, there's no more peanuts, bud. This pack is nice. <clears throat> we have a Flesh Gorger, which I'm actually a big fan of. Cryptic Command's a little specific. Displacer Kitten's not for us. I'm pretty sure it's either Phyrexian Flesh Gorger or Urtai. Also Fast Bond, which is interesting. That's a surprisingly late Fast Bond. What do I make of that? What can we do with a, this late of a Fast Bond? Watson did get one peanut as a treat. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Oh, oh, Katie is home. Watson, who's that? Who's here? All right, we're just taking fast. I think it's just too good. Oh my... Jesus. 
don't know if you guys heard that. Those dogs went batshit. <laughs> oh, boy. I think we're just taking grief here because, come on, it's grief, dude. That seems like a pretty easy pick. I like how this deck looks so far. I would love Sword of the Meek. Contagion, interesting. Coalition Relic, interesting. Could just be Blooming Marsh. Makes things like Fast Bond or Tri Builder or Grist a lot easier to cast. Coalition Relic is cute. I don't know if we need it. It's also a little pricey. It might just be Blooming Marsh here. Could also be Arboreal Grazer if we want to play like an extra land. I'm taking Marsh. I don't know what direction we're going in here. I know we got some good lands. Oh, Mind Twist? How late is this Mind Twist? What is this, 17 plus 320? This is a sixth pick Mind Twist. Deluge would be sick. But we're not we're not passing a Mind Twist with, with two Moxes, a Talisman. A, yeah, no. That's... It's no, it's no good. It's not very good, is it? <laughs> I think there was a Dark Depths that already went by. Necromancy's just good, although we don't have anything big for it. We could take Bloodstain Mire, which gets a Bayou and the Zagoth Triome. I don't think we're necromancying. I think we're just Bloodstain Miring. This is not a land. This can be a land as a treat. I too love me some mind twist. Don't get it twisted, you know? And if you guys want to support the channel, be sure to follow or subscribe. They're both great ways to do that. I guess we're just taking Witherbloom Command because it's the only card that we can even remotely play. I don't even know if this is main deckable. Mills, three cards. Oh, look, Elf Sleeper came back. So did Woodfall Primus. So did Torsten. So did Show and Tell. <laughs> I I think it's actually Woodfall Primus because if we can, do we have any? We have no way to discard. It might be Evolve Evolve Sleeper. This might be an Evolve Sleeper deck. If that makes any sense. I think Woodfall Primus has higher upside. Eh, there's a Kogel. This is an underdog too. We could have actually been like taking these smaller aggressive creatures. I'm taking the Kogla. Oh, Frexian Flesh Gorger came back? That's exciting. Uh, hmm. I kind of like Astral Dragon, but also like Through the Breach is just good, right? Enders the Battlefield create two tokens that are copies of non-creature permanent. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to take the Astral Dragon. Oh, Grazer came back, and that was kind of a card we were considering. Okay, this is looking interesting. Oh, Misery Shadow, that's definitely playable. This is weird because it's another situation where I feel like almost everything we've drafted is is playable. This is a shrine non-creature and only a permanent with mana value two or less. So a little worse than abrupt decay. Then a creature gets negative three, negative one. Or you can Drain them for two. <clears throat> Where is our sword? Tinker's pretty good if we end up getting sword. It actually turns it on, you know what I mean? Turn it on. I, I, I shrank the booster size instead of the, the cards in the pack size. 
Dude, I'm so meticulous about getting these exactly right. Oh god, I'm doing I'm doing I'm all right, we'll keep it like that. I wanted to shrink these so that we can see all the cards on the end as well. These will just be seven plus an X. I think it's Tinker. We also have Mox, Mox, Talisman. <clears throat> this is probably gonna come back. I, I think Tinker is gonna give us a, a strategy here. Meanwhile, I'm still I'm still on the hunt for that sword of the meek. Also, tinkering in a flesh gorger is still fine. It's a seven five with menace and lifelink, and the ward is paying seven to kill it. Like, not terrible. I do like a graveyard trespasser. Neon Tokyo with ten gifted subs. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, we're just taking pest infestation. Yeah, that's the Thank one. You. Oh my god, dude. Thank you so much, my dude. Really appreciate you, buddy. What a friggin' saint. I'm gonna take this Thank pest you. infestation. <clears throat> Patchwork Automaton. Marsh Flats also gets by you in Zagoth's Triome. So another, another little sweetie. Questing Beast is just a good dude. Uh, we also have death here. What are our ways of discarding currently? Thank you. <laughs> um, not many. Fire Blast can go. This carding does not seem like our strong suit. Could just be Eternal Witness too. Double green though. Do we just want Marsh Thank you. Hmm. This is actually a tricky pick. So this is six cards, Thank which you. puts the 22. Actually, we have a plenty of playables. I think we're just taking Marsh Flats here. I don't think we're reanimating. Oh, Shielder is fantastic. Holy shoot. That's pretty easy Thank pick. You. I got so excited thinking this was a Sword of the Meek, but it was not. I just saw, I just saw a retro frame. Thank you. <clears throat> this member's not bad. If we're gonna kick Torok in the deck, this is definitely the one. This card costs like zero. Ignoble Hierarch also fixes our black and our green. But we need green to get green, and we don't have any double green, so as long as we have the green, we're already good. I think it's Torok here. For for removal, we have Fatal Push, Snuff Out. Um, that might be it. I do like Torok, Dread Canter, and we do have Mox, Talisman, Fast. Yeah, let's just take the Torok. That seems cooler. Oh, man, I don't think we're getting it. I don't think we're getting the sword. Which makes Thopter Foundry pretty bad. I think we just take Recurring Nightmare here. Yeah, all right. Flash is actually pretty good. Is it? We get Woodfall Primus and Astral Dragon. I think those are both fine Flash targets. Yeah, all right. I'll take a Flash. I also don't see much else that we're getting rid of here. I think this is the last one, right? 32, 36. This is actually 37. We got one more pack. Did not see it. Okay, that's unfortunate. So we can take out this. Yeah, that's a bummer. Just take Soul Guide Lantern for the sideboard, I guess. Oh, see, there's Nettle Cyst. <clears throat> also Watery Grave. Uh, it's for each artifact or enchantment you control. I mean, we're not going to have that many. I think we're just water. Actually, Mosswood Dread Knight might be decent as the extra card draw. This is nice to have a... a we have Bloodstain and Marsh Flat. I think it's just nice to have a land we can fetch, a blue land we can fetch that comes into play untapped. So, I'll take Once Upon a Time... So this is just Sultai, Sultai good stuff right now. It's not going to be a serious question. Shrew Garner, ask me a serious question. Oh, Life Death and Eternal Witness came back. That's interesting. I'll take Eternal Witness. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? This is a controversial subject. <clears throat> 
I like a Corsair of Crew fix. Also a Tamio. I'll take a Tamio. No. Yeah. I like that better than Corsair here. Michael is at work. He has a regular job that he has to work during the day. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that you got to work in order to make money. Oh my God, Katie's taking the dogs out. This is adorable. They're all going on a little walk. Not Hunter, though. Hunter had surgery yesterday, so he got eight teeth taken out. He got a dental. So he's just snoozing away right now. Oh, then the ignoble hierarchy came back. What a little rascal. Baleful Mastery. That's not bad either. Okay. Well, now we have some cuts to make. And a life from below. I mean, like the question is, is it a movie that takes place during Christmas or is it a movie that is that has a Christmas theme? You know, like, what are we defining as a Christmas movie? If we're talking about a movie that actually has Christmas theming, it's not a Christmas movie. If we're loosely saying Christmas movies are movies that have... Christmas theming in the background like a tree. Okay. Home Alone is definitely a Christmas movie. Because the plot doesn't work without it being Christmas. Die Hard could literally be any time of the year, you know, and <clears throat> Glad I took that watery grave, actually. Um, if Seal was an artifact, that would be cool. Oh, we only need one cut here. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Why am I? I'm like, oh, we're at 31. All we need is 30. That's not how that works at all. <clears throat> okay, so we actually need a lot of cuts, like eight, I think. Get rid of Hierarch. Get rid of Soul Guide. Get rid of Grazer. I like Flash with Astral and Woodfall. I think that's probably fine. Right, but like it being a Christmas party is not super relevant. Like you could literally change the party that they're having <clears throat> to any, hey, we're having a 4th of July party. Hey, we're having a New Year's Eve party, right? Like, like you could literally, you just need to have a party that John McClane has to go to. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> uh, uh, don't call Hans Gruber Gruberman, because that's not his name at all. So... Yeah, recurring's not great, unfortunately. I mean, unless they just kill our guys, and then we just get them back. Like, that's also fine. <clears throat> uh, I don't even care about fast bond. We don't have any way to take advantage of fast bond, unfortunately. Three more cuts. I think we can cut one of these. I think Baleful Mastery is better than Snuff Out. I know that's sacrilege. Are we tinkering good enough? Probably not. I mean, if we're taking out Talisman, we're definitely taking out Tinker. So we're definitely taking out Tinker. <clears throat> so we need two cuts? Hmm, fascinating. Man, I wish I picked up that random Torsten now. <coughs> 
I actually like Sakura Tri Builder a little better now. Being able to go from two to four seems good. Um, did we have other planeswalkers? I thought we had another piece of removal that killed planeswalkers. I guess not. Yeah, I'm definitely taking snuff out then. Three shadow, deep combat flash. Kicks, eternal. I do like everything else here. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish my throat didn't get all scratchy all of a sudden. So this is 25. I actually need two cuts. Oh, I don't like that. This guy can be a three drop. I wish I had a way to blink this guy. That would be cool. You are all so young, and I am all so old. <laughs> uh, see, that's funny. We might be able to go 24 and once upon a time. No, Mox Diamond is definitely not a land. You don't count Mox Diamond as a land because you literally need a land to use it. So if your hand is land Mox Diamond, it's a one land hand. If your hand is land land Mox Diamond, it's a two land hand. All right. Cuts, cuts, cuts. This is 12 creatures. We, You're probably going to be a four drop, let's be honest. I could see cutting these. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the chat right now. I think you guys are all having... Like, if I flash this guy in, you make two tokens that are copies of things. So, like, you can copy lands, and then it just ramps you, right? And then there are three, three flying dragons. So like you just get, that seems pretty good. I want to try that. Also just Woodfall Primus kills two permanents and you get a five, five, which is also pretty decent. I don't think I care about Tamiyo. I also don't, uh, once upon a time actually helps with things like flash. Um, all right, let's add all of these. We'll see how this looks. Sort by color. Yeah, we were trying to go Thopter Foundry. We were trying to Tinker. Tinker was good if we had the sword, because then we could sack the sword, go get Thopter Foundry, bring back the sword. Um, so black sources, we'll start with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's 12. Blue, we have one, two, Three, four, five. That's probably fine. All we have is flash. Green sources, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm tempted to cut one black for one blue just because I want to make sure we have early flash mana. Oh, and I also wanted to add one more land. I think we're just playing 41 with 16 lands and mocks because I don't want to not. Yeah, this seems fine. <coughs> All right. Yeah, we're living the 41 dream. Don't let your 41 dreams be memes, you know? Uh, 
Okay, welcome to round one. Eh, we'll keep this hand. It's got all the colors. It's got a couple things to do. If we hit a mox of any kind on turn two, it's just a turn two gix and a turn three shielded. Oh, they went to five. The soup lord is mulliganing aggressively. Is it going to be Soup Lord? Is it really that mathematically devastating to play one extra card? No, it's it's literally not at all. This is why everyone's just started playing 80 cards in Constructed because of Yorion. Like, it's funny, like, I was a proponent of not playing exactly 40 or exactly 60 for years. And everyone's like, no, it gives you a statistical advantage. And then as soon as Yorion comes out, the ability to pay three mana to get a creature from your sideboard invalidated years of uh, <clears throat> of statistical strategy to not play one extra card. Okay. I believe you. Jump in the line. It's too bad Witherbloom Command is not an instant. Am I right? Yeah, you right. Let's play Yogi Boy. Or Gixie Boy, I guess. Was tempting to kill this, but... Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> well. Well, well. Well, well, well. We can play both of these two. Or we can kill this and draw a card. Oh, it's non-creature, non-land permanent. We actually can't kill that. So that just makes our choice a little bit easier. So we can go this guy. Show me what you've got. Force of Negation, huh? So next time they can play Might and Weakstone. I don't care about Force of Negation. Yeah, let's take the Might and Weakstone, because it kills Shieldred next turn. And then we can go black, this guy, this guy. Whenever one creature in the counter is to one of your opponents, it's controlling the pain life that you draw. Yeah, that's not going to get through. So, not going to waste our time. However, the bat will get through. Yeah, that's interesting. H HXC, there's, that's actually the main argument I've made. When you have a streamlined deck and you want to hit exact pieces, like Splinter Twin, going down to the minimum number of cards is good. Oh, they didn't play... They played... Okay, sure. When you have a deck, like a limited deck... So the, the common thing they would say is like, you always want to play... You want to make sure you cut your worst card. If you have a 41st card, there's always going to be a card that's worse, right? But that's not always true in limited. Sometimes in limited, I want to have a card like Naturalize that kills an enchantment or an artifact. I need to have that because it's relevant in the matchup. But I also need creature removal. And even my worst creature is good. Like... it. It's a situation where the versatility of having access to those cards is more important than the statistical improbability or the, the statistical disadvantage of like adding a 41st card. Well, I'm going to attack here because we know they have nothing. But we could push this. They might force it. I think that's actually fine. I mean, if you want to hard, if you want to just hard cast a force here, that's that's okay. Because <clears throat> you also have to tap both your blue and it prevents you from mystical tutoring. Alright, so do we get to draw three here? <laughs> That's a thing. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Yes. This is an Ancestral Recall and we gain six, so... <laughs> 
Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. So they're definitely countering that. But they're not countering this. So they're gonna, yeah, okay. I guess we play a land. Oh, here's what, this is, this, this is actually gonna be disgusting. This costs three. Yep. They got to keep force, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're just probably passing here. I assume they'll just counter flash when we when we cast it because it's their last card. So, oh well. Or yeah. Okay, that's just the end. Just write this email real quick. Uh, what did we see? Literally, like, not much. All right. Yeah, sure. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, we'll definitely keep this. Okay. They went to six. They did go to five game one and they went to six this game. So not the best. Oh God, we get to twist them eventually. Like next turn we can twist them for two. If they go like card wall of omens, it might be worth it. <clears throat> or if we can just draw Mox Jet, that would be bananas. Um, is it worth it to twist them for two here? Next time they go to five, they play land, they go to four. They probably play one card, they go to three. I mean, we can probably get their whole hand next turn, but if we, do, if we twist them now, we can also grief or Karn next turn, which does seem better. I mean, it's random, like Blightsteel and uh, Mystical Tutor. Okay. I mean, they're, I wonder if they were going to Mystical Tutor for Tinker and then Tinker that Blightsteel because that would have been good. But it, okay. It also felt like they F6'd, so that was weird. Like, they could have just literally just like, in response to Mind Twist, they just Mystical Tutor for Tinker and then Tinker next turn. Oh, I guess they had Blightsteel in hand, so that doesn't work, but I don't know. Look, man, I don't know. I don't know how Magic the Gathering works. Okay. Round dose. Dose with the most. Oh, uh, this hand seems great, and we get to once upon a time? Sure. Show me what you've got. Shielder, eh? <clears throat> Do we want a fourth land or a Shieldred? Probably Shieldred. The odds of us hitting a fourth land is, seems pretty good in the next three turns. 
Also, we can hit a Mox Jet, which I believe is in our deck. We just never see it, you know? Oh, there we go. Look at that. They do exist. They do exist. Pro white, huh? Hmm. Well, that is tempting, isn't it? Great question. Great question about Kang. Um, you know, I still stand by that Kang is going to be would be one of the easiest characters in the MCU to replace. Because he literally has infinite personalities and personas. He's Immortus. He's Ramatut. He's Iron Lad. Like Kang is literally like 14 different characters in the in the Marvel Marvel universe. The question is whether we dread a Cantor here or if we deep cavern bat. I think we deep cavern bat and just take a hit. Let's get this ch Paragon's good, though. Do we have a way to deal with a Paragon? I guess we don't have a way to deal with Council's Judgment, so if we take Paragon, next time they just Council's Judgment us, so. There's a red. Hello, my dear. Hello. Did you bring Lumi down here? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. She's exploring. We're watching our our friend's dog. <clears throat> I think we're just going to pest infestation. What do you think about that? I feel like there's so many pests, and if you have infestation, it's not going to be good. It's probably correct. Because now they can't do anything next turn, and we should be able to Torok their two cards. You know, Bim? You're going to Torok? <laughs> this fine gentleman. <laughs> I didn't know you were getting home like an hour early, you little rascal. You don't even tell me when you leave work anymore. I just see the garage door open and I'm like, oh, well then. <clears throat> well, we're definitely, they played planes. We, I mean, I'll block if you want to attack. Are they just trading? That's interesting. Okay. Well, see you later. Bye bye. So with four cards, we probably want to grief first to take their best card. Or we could Torak to just hit two random cards. Hmm. I think we got grief, you know? Yeah, grief them. Yeah, you got to grief them. She'll garner the cases Okay, we just went. <laughs> Did Katie come bring queso? <laughs> no. <laughs> why, would she go? why would she have that? <sighs> Well, I, I swear we have a Mox in our deck somewhere. I guess a Tribe Elder is kind of like a Mox, you know? Yeah, that's a pretty good hand. Just gets you another land, you know? That's really all you want. Okay. I have to go check my crops now. Okay. Enjoy your little game. Are you taking Lumi upstairs, or are you just going to leave her down here until she wants to go back up? I'm going to leave her until she wants to go back up. Okay. Well, a Jitte before a creature is fine. I accept. Um, let's play this guy. Deep Cavern Bat into Palantir seems fine. We could Tri Builder and just get to these one turn faster, but we're really only getting into Karn one turn faster. Interesting. Well, hmm. let's take Lion Sash. So they have to play Spirit now. Yeah, I would be surprised if Marvel made character if if Marvel even agreed to sign an exclusivity. Like that seems weird for Marvel to do. 
Because, like, they have all the cards in that situation, I feel like. They're like, oh, well, if you want to be exclusive, we can just get a different Kang, man. That's... This is interesting. I don't want them to equip Jitte, because that, that makes me sad. I guess we could just play... Play this, play Palantir. So that we know they played Planes and Selfless. Not attacking, not attacking. Uh, <laughs> let's put you on top and then you on top of that. And if they want to take eight, that's totally fine. Yep, they did not, or they did. They didn't want to take eight, I guess. Well, Caracas is kind of obnoxious. I honestly also want more Loki and Owen Wilson. I, I, <laughs> Loki is shockingly good. Like their dynamic is fantastic. I think Owen Wilson and Luke and Tom Hiddleston play off each other so well. Yikes. Um, so we know this is out. They, we know they have these two in hand. I would kind of just like to kill this guy. Josh, Deadpool supposedly right is what is that? What are you asking? Like that's not a that's not a full question. <laughs> so I don't actually know what you're trying to ask there. Um double black, we have double black. I kind of just want to play this and take the two. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> like if they attack with this and it's equipped, it's five damage. Um, I did not hear anything about Owen Wilson being in Deadpool. Oh, they just gave me a Blooming Marsh. They're like, no more. I took eight already. <laughs> this is an equipment wearing an equipment. You got it. They're just gonna exile some things. I just got a notification from Netflix that said Maestro is now available on Netflix. And I wonder if that's about the, uh, the Hulk character Maestro. You guys think? You think it's a Maestro movie? Well, shooty booties. <laughs> the Maestro. <laughs> that's... That's pretty good. Oh, okay. They have two counters on that guy. All right. All right. So they can they can deal five to Karn. We can plus Karn here. We can make a two two as well. So if we go Sakura Tribelder. Oh, actually, Mox Diamond makes it a three three. Yeah, let's do that. Let's cast this. Pitching this Marsharino. Play this. Play this. Make a guy, which is a 3-3. Three, three, and then we have two blockers. They probably kill this guy immediately, which gets us another land. <clears throat> I 
Um, I'm going to put this on top, see if they want to give it to me. Nice. I had a feeling they might. I also think after next turn, they're not going to have that many cards. So this guy's probably going to do a little bit better than Mind Twist. It forces him to keep up Caracas. Oh, interesting. What is this? Four mana. Sarah Paragon? <laughs> Relax. How nice. What a good draw. Wow, that was a really nice draw. Congratulations. Well, guess Karn is dead. And then they have Caracas for our Torok and our Gix. The two creatures in our hands are, are legendary, and they have a Caracas, so that's nice. Pest Infestation one time. Mox Jet. One, two, three, four. So we can go Castle Kicker Black Black. One, two... They can also just kill this guy. Or exile him. <laughs> oh, they did not make me... They did not... Interesting. They did not kill him. Well. Okie dokie. Mono legendary creatures dot deck over here. Um, yes, that's exactly what we want. Yeah, that's, that kills both Jitte and Season Hollow Blade. Thank you. <clears throat> they could have used, um... They could have used only one counter if they did that before the discard trigger. Okay, that's good. Getting rid of the Jitte is all I really care about here, though, so. Yep, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> if we can just draw something, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that we can put on the board... They're going to give me a land, and they're going to be like, you can put a land on the board. What's the problem? Yeah, I figure they're going to deal nine here. Put us to eight, put us to nine. Yep. They have no cards in hand, though. <laughs> Fucking of course. <sighs> Destroy non-creature. So we get rid of the Jitte. And then we can get rid of this. And then we just take five next turn. Oh, no, we actually can't get rid of this guy anymore because of the stupid intrepid adversary. Great. We can gain two and survive for another turn, I guess. Cast. Destroy. Uh, choose this thing. Guess we go to one. I don't know why I played that. I think I just have nothing going for me, you know? I kind of want both of these. But I don't want to play this now because I, I know we're getting shielded, which is just a good draw. Does this draw cards? Yeah, it does let you draw cards. What could we draw that is better than shielded? I can't think of anything. Woodfall Primus is gone. Shielded also just gets bounced. Yeah, Caracas is really good against us. 
going to one. <laughs> yeah, actually, because of Shielder, I think we're just ones upon a timing. Um, Astral Dragon. One, two. Not legendary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We actually have plenty of mana for it as well. That's really good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that just keeps us alive forever, doesn't it? I'm actually doing no targets. Done. Uh, well, those are both very good draws. Eight one ones that gain us life, sure. <laughs> Solid card. I, I if we exile this, it means they ha they can use this on like right now. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, that's good. I mean, we just have pretty much an insurmountable advantage between Palantir and this board state. We can double block both of these guys, gain six, and still have two left. Um, and then we still have Astral Dragon in hand. What would we have drawn off Palantir? We'll never know. It'll be gone. Okay. I I will play first. Um, easy mulligan. I will keep this because Flash is really good if we hit one of our other guys, and then we also have Golgari Rot Farm. So that's like not mulliganing. Oh, let's make sure we play a land here. I got so excited by my opponent being like big fan. That that's happened before actually. I'm like, oh, let me respond to you. And then I'll just F6 through the turn because I assume it's your turn. Oh no. Why would you do this? I have a mox as well. I'll draw it on turn eight though, so similar but different. Well, we can just play this and then cross our fingers that we have another play to flip it, to not, to prevent this from flipping rather. Okay, a lot of things. You're doing a lot of things right now. Let's just draw something good. That's a guy. So we can go black, this one, Misery's Shadows. Let's get miserable, am I right? <laughs> this guy's totally dead. They're playing red white. This guy's gonna get shocked. No. Lightning bolted. Oh god. Stop it. Get some help. Well, that's a thing. That's terrifying. Okie dokie. <laughs> Come on, flash target. Fantastic. That's good. Oh, boy. We're just playing Eternal Witness here to get back. We don't have enough things in our deck to, like, to not just do this. And I don't want this guy to flip because then they can just attack. <sighs> We don't have enough thing. We don't have enough stuff going on to really 
take our time with Eternal Witness. They could just kill us right now. I'm, I'm ready for it, actually. Ready? If you're going to use a red... Okay, I was like, if you're going to use a red to activate sneak attack, I don't think that's the one you tap, so... They are looking for juice. We're looking for juice too, but we don't have any way to look for the juice. If I could draw once upon a time and then find like Woodfall Primus to kill Sneak Attack and like land, that would be cool. So it's clear they're not sneaking something in right now, right? Uh, okay. Fascinating. Well, I'm definitely blocking both creatures. Okay. That was sure. Uh, no, okay, that's fine. Come on, one time, one time, just one time. That's helpful. Is it? Is it? Is it? I don't know if it is actually. Negative three, negative three, negative one. No, that doesn't do anything. Destroy a non creature, non land permanent. That could be a mox, I guess. Maybe. Oh, boy. I mean, I guess that's. We're just gonna go destroy a not. Do we just mill them? I'm gonna mill them, and we're gonna we're gonna try to see if it does what we want it to do. We're gonna try to hit a big fat idiot. You ready? It's total luck. It doesn't do anything. Destroy a creature. Uh, choose target player for the mill. And get rid of this guy. Let's just cast this. It gives us a perfect mana. Look at that. What a beautiful thing. Ready? Well, he we hit a hex drinker in a gut. So that's something, I guess. <laughs> Is it something good? I don't know. Is this round three? Wow. We're crushing. We haven't lost a game yet. Time to be alive. Yep, taking three. And now we're just gonna draw Woodfall Primus, right? Like that's that's the perfect. Oh, that could be a Woody boy. Okay, okay. Oh, Astral Dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can Gris kill permanence? No, it's just it's creature planeswalker, right? I mean, it's definitely Astral Dragon. We could flash Astral Dragon in, make two copies. One of them would be this guy, and then we can kill their sneak attack with it, leaving us with one three three. Or we can just cast it next turn. How many turns do we want to give them?
Oh, it's non-creature permanent, so that doesn't even work. So we can't copy that. <laughs> Cards are so complicated. So, yeah, I think we're just waiting and hard casting it next turn. I mean, we're just crossing our fingers that they don't hit anything, right? Yes. All right, so they get rid of our talisman, actually, so that does... I mean we can't cast it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're one shy now. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right. Still looking for that Woodfall Primus. Ah, Baleful Mastery is something. Also, this exile, so if they do put like an Ulamog into play or something, we can. I feel like this is the turn they're going to draw it. Oh, they did not. Okay, so next turn we should be able to cast your, your dragon. Oh, they're just playing a land. Why? I don't understand this because like you could have just played this last turn, right? Fatal push. Now we're at a point where we can just hard cast the Woodfall Primus. Choose target non-creature permanent. This guy. Oh, do they both become copies of sneak attack? Because that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, sure. I have two flying sneak attacks. Let's see if they hit it. Not yet. Fable's a good one, though. Oh, boy, we are... We have ten... 10 power in the air, though. Grief. And with no cards in hand, huh? That's unfortunate. What do they have? Two, three, four. They have seven damage here. Oh, boy. Oh, we can flash in a grief during after this triggers, though? That's... I think that's actually... I think that actually would win us the game. We're gonna kill this guy. Oh no, they could flat they could still activate in response, right? I mean I guess we still have to go for it, right? We're at eight. They have seven damage on board. But they actually don't have any cards to discard, right? So we they during their draw step. Oh, in response, oh, they can just do it again. It's unfortunate. Maybe it's unfortunate. Let's see what it is. Mm, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> solid top deck. Oh lord. It we can not do anything. Yep, that's good. That's good. Gruff's Triplets, Atraxa, Natural Order, Orcish Lumberjacks. Yep, that was a fa fantastic draw. <sighs> and if we responded by flashing in grief, they could literally just pay another red to put him into play, so it doesn't really do anything. Yep. 
that's a bummer. Well, we don't have anything great against that. I mean, we needed one turn. I guess that's too much to ask for, though. So, you know, what can you do? I would have liked a Woodfall Primus for 14 turns in a row, but... Hey, it's a Woodfall Primus. I'll keep this. I think Fatal Push is probably pretty good against them. We have all the lands we could ask for, so... Since we're going to try to bounce this anyway, I'm going to start with Swamp in case they play, like, Delighted Halfling or Ragavan. Because then we actually have an opportunity to kill it. If we play this into this, we just don't get untapped mana for three turns. Yeah, that's what we were assuming what you would do. Oh, a Mox Jet. Well, that does mean we can play Shouldered next turn. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I actually had a feeling they would also have Ragavan, but what are you going to do? I can't can't play around Ragavan forever. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Just mono one drops. Um, That's interesting. Do I just Torok here? No, I want a shield red. <sighs> yeah, I feel like there's not a ton of... Oh, this is great for us. Ragavan and Sneak Attack. Well, that's a bummer because they just get to discard. Oh, he's only triggered once a turn. Oh, when he discarded one or more cards, so it does trigger just the one time, though. Um, Getting in there with Shieldred, I think they're doing worse than I am in terms of aggression, so. Now they go to 11. This is an opportunity to kill this Hex Drinker. I also have six mana next turn. I think they forgot that this guy grows, so now we can easily block. Yeah, they definitely forgot that. So our guy's a five. Our guy is going to grow with your guy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I almost kind of want Snuff Out. They have a bunch of tiny little creatures that are obnoxious and good. Pest infestation? Uh, we definitely want pest infestation. They have sneak attack. Hmm. 
there, it's in the sideboard. I'm not even playing it. <laughs> it's, uh, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I'm tempted to just take out Flash and an Astral Dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> the drama has entered the chat. I think we're cutting these. Is that our only blue? Interesting. That's our only blue. Okay, now I'm bringing in Hierarch. We're gonna take out Watery Grave and the Islands and take out Talisman. Uh, so we need three lands, but it's a 60. Yeah, that actually seems good. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 11, 12. Yeah, let's do this. This is 40, 16 lands. Yeah, all right. Oh, now, oh, now you see the cards that are in the deck. An orb thingy. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the official term that's actually in the Lord of the Rings book. Gandalf is like, Sauron is using his orb thingy. I personally don't know what a palantir is, so. For all I know, Tolkien could have just made that word up. I'm going to look it up right now and find out. Oh, it, oh. A palantir is one of several indestructible crystal balls from J.R.R. Tolkien's epic fan. Okay, so it literally is made up. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, it's one of several indestructible crystal balls from J.R.R. Tolkien's epic fantasy novel, Lord of the Rings. The word comes from Kenya, Palinfar, and Tear Watch Over. The Palantirs were used for communication and to see events in other parts of Arda or in the past. Was a made-up word. I will also go out on a limb and assume that or thank is a made-up word as well. I assume that is the location that this particular Palantir is located. Oh my god, all words are made up is always hilarious to me. Because it's true, <laughs> but you know, you know, it's not. I don't know if I like this hand. They went to six. I like, I like Deep Cavern Bat better when they go to six. Oh, they went to five. I like Deep Cavern Bat better when I go to five. Torok and Deep Cavern Bat, huh? Give me that mox. Yep, 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 yep. We're just gonna play a swamp here. I don't wanna get I don't know if they got a wasteland in this four color deck they're playing. Skull clamp. If they go skull clamp one drop, I was gonna be like, Wither Bloom. I'm actually tempted to Wither Bloom command this. If they go guy skull clamp it, it feels really bad. Because they might have Hex Drinker. I would literally go Hex Drinker and then Skull Clamp it to draw two. Yeah, that's fine. Rough Triplets and a Sun Baked Canyon. That's okay. Hey, that's okay. So next turn we can him to Torok or play Karn, which feels nice. 
if they draw a card and can't cast it, that's pretty good because then we can make them discard. Well, of course they can cast it. Rascally rabbits. Um, but they do get three green off of a forest. Yeah, so actually we get... It's kind of nice playing this because otherwise they're just going to cast their Gruff's Triplets and that's going to be hard to deal with. So, get kicking, I guess. Oh, and a Torsten. Where was this? Where did this guy go? Wait, what? Oh, I took that guy. That guy's in my hand. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that's, that's not. He's 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 here. He's all with it. I assure you. Wasteland on my. Oh, gross. Oh, that's no good. That's pretty good. Well, we're just going to play the cards that we can play. Actually, we're getting in there. If you want to block, totally fine. Yeah, we're just going to do it four with that guy. If they want to get Wasteland back and kill my Bayou, that's fine. We can still play Shielder next turn. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yep. Thankfully, we have a lot. Of basic lands. Do you like how it took so long to finish that sentence? And again, if they want to double block here with two of their mana sources, it's totally fine. Ignoble Hierarch can be in clutch here, dude. I feel like we're doing it. I feel like this game is, is looking good for us. That's, yep, nailed it. 3-0. <laughs> Finally. Finally got the trophy. Sweet little black green deck. Thank you guys for watching. Let's open this treasure chest as a little treat for those of you who stuck around. You can have a little treasure chest as a treat. Yes, open one. We get Fleeting Image, five play points, Moonlight Bargain, and a Shy Geki. That's worth absolutely nothing. Thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you next time.